Hello, I'm Sister Lisa Peter, and I'm coming to you today on February the 28th, 2016, from Hazelwood, USA. And the topic of my devotional, based on Acts chapter 217, is called Dream Dreams. In Genesis 37, 19, And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Are you a dreamer? Are you having dreams? I've always loved the story of Joseph and his coat of many colors. Always been fascinated how he got promoted by God from being a shepherd. And he became a ruler, second in command. What must have seemed like the end to him at times was really just the beginning. Those stumbling blocks were stepping stones. Yes, he had to suffer great persecution from his brothers and mockery. He knew what it was to be lied on and cheated, talked about and mistreated. But through all of this, he stayed faithful and was used greatly by God. He was able to interpret other people's dreams and what he said came true. And sometimes it seemed like he was just forgotten. Two years after he interpreted that dream that we heard about, about the baker and the butler, those two dreams, two men had had dreams, and, he, and uh, Joseph was able to interpret both of those. And one of them lost their life, just like Joseph had told him what the dream meant, and the other was restored back to his place. Well, two years later, Pharaoh had had a dream, and they were calling in people from all over to interpret his dream and tell him what it was, but he couldn't find anybody with the right interpretation. And then the um, man said, hey, I had a dream several years ago, and Joseph interpreted for me, and, you know, I, I think he's still down there in that prison. So Pharaoh called for him, and he was brought up, and um, Joseph says, um, God, give, you know, you tell me the dreams, and God will interpret, you know, God will give me the interpretation. And so when Pharaoh told him the dreams, it came true, and he was Joseph was put second in command because when he said that we're going to have seven years of great, a great harvest, and then there's going to be seven years, it's going to be great famine. So we need to store up. You need to find you a man that can is good over this kind of stuff, and and have him get storehouses full of you know of all this food for for when the seven years. A famine come that they'll have plenty to eat and Pharaoh says you know I can't find a better man than you and so there Joseph got put second in command God's time clock is not our time clock God puts us where he needs us when he needs us and it's for his glory Acts 2 and 17 what I mentioned it says and it shall come to pass in the last days saith God I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. You know, um, it says old men here, and a lot of times we joke about that, about you have to be old to have a dream, but you don't. Joseph was 17, and there's been, chill, you know, there's been younger than that, I'm sure, that's had dreams, God-given dreams. We don't know what dreams the people that we have witnessed to our dreaming now, that God can be bringing back to remembrance the things that we've said. That's what I'd like to believe, that God is reminding them of the message that we preached or the song that we sang that had touched their heart or a lesson that we had taught, a devotional or something, or something that they had read in the Bible, and then God brings it back to the remembrance. Something in a dream makes it all click and brings it all into place. Or maybe a Sunday school experience that they had years ago. Maybe they felt God touched their heart when they was a child. And now when I'm speaking to them, you know, they're reminded, hey, I know what she's saying is true. And I had a dream, or I'm having dreams right now that I don't understand what they mean. But that's what it is. God is calling me. God is drawing me to him that I need to repent, that I need to get baptized in Jesus' name, that I must get the Holy Ghost. i got to be ready because Jesus is coming. Is that the kind of dreams you're having? Well, God, he can bring it all to pass. He uses us in ways that we don't know because it's all for his glory, for his purpose. That's what it is. Great prophecies. Don't let these dreams be ignored. Pray for God to give you the divine interpretation. Repent, like I just said, and be baptized and get full of the Holy Ghost. Find a church that will baptize you in Jesus' name. A church that preaches that there is only one God and Jesus is his name. You've got to have that revelation. The Bible tells us all the time that there's only one God. 
You say, well, it says Father, it says Son, it says Holy Ghost. But did you know that the Father, that the devil is also the father of lies? Did you know the devil is the son of perdition? And that he is that evil spirit. He is that spirit going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. But we don't say there's three devils. We don't try to divide the devil up into different capacities or different manifestations. You know he is a liar and the father of lies. That's what I just said. But there's only one God. Jesus is his name. God robed in flesh that came as a sacrifice that we could be saved. It's so awesome. It's so glorious. God can give you the interpretation. We are living in a time that there is churches everywhere on every corner. We have access to the Bible. We are in a time of great harvest, that there is a lot. There is the Word of God going forth on the Internet, in your homes, on the radio, on TV. Um, there is just being proclaimed. Some of it is the true gospel. Some of it is being false gospel. But it's all, we have that freedom right now. But there's going to be a coming a time. It's going to be a famine, a famine of the hearing of, of the Word of God. And that's why we say, God, give us that daily spiritual manna. Give us this day our daily bread. Revelation of who Jesus is. Revelation of being who we were called to be. Kings and priests in God's kingdom. His hands and feet and his mouthpiece. Taking back that which was stolen from us. Restoration of the years the moth and the canker worm has eaten. Getting full of that spirit. Blessings in our storehouse that we cannot contain. Laying up treasure in heaven, not losing the vision of Jesus, not losing sight of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus, running swiftly this race. I have a dream, a God-given dream, a dream of great revival, a dream of babes being born into the kingdom of God, a dream of hope being born into the hopeless, a dream that when we pray for the sick, they shall recover, a dream of being all that I can be for the kingdom of God, that dream of hearing Christ say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Do you have a dream? I wrote this uh, poem called Dreams on June the 12th, 2015. And this is about my husband. When dreams come true, I hope I'm with you because my dream is spending a lifetime with you. When my ship comes in, I'll go sailing with you. Together our dreams will come true. If seeing is believing, then chase away my doubt. Let me see the beauty of our faith. Of holding hands, make us one. Let us hold hands forever unto the sun. Together our dreams will come true. And my husband's dream and my dream is soul winning. To reach out to the lost. To be all that we can be in the kingdom of God. Together being a team for the king. And I love you. I hope that you got something out of my little devotion today. I know I get tongue-tied sometimes it's because... You know, I'm just right here at home, just myself, but I'm speaking out there, and I don't know if one person is going to hear me, or thousands or millions. I mean, it's all in God's hands. But what I'm just doing is my part to throw out that lifeline. Jesus is the lifeline. Grab hold of him today and let him lead and guide your life. Because without him, we are like a ship tossed about on life's sea. We must have him be our captain. He must be our pilot. He must be in control. Okay, well, you have a wonderful day.